Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We are here in LA checking out of our hotel. We're gonna head over to Union Station and hop on the train. We're gonna go across the country and up this time. We're gonna end up in Maine. We are super excited about exploring Maine. So hopefully you guys will be joining us for this whole journey. It'll be seven days. We're gonna be on four trains and it is going to be 3,732 miles. Our journey begins at night as we board the train near bedtime, so our beds are already made for us. We hop into bed and we are ready to leave California. We will start our journey on day two as we wake up for our first fresh air break in Arizona. Now the Sunset Limited is the oldest continuously running named train in the U.S. It has been running since 1894. It crosses the Continental Divide, the Rio Grande, as well as the Mississippi River. There are many sights to see along the way, but first, our first stop is in Tucson, Arizona for our fresh air break. Okay, we stopped for our first uh, fresh air break. We are here in Tucson, Arizona. Uh, you can see the train here behind me. We haven't had breakfast yet. We had to breakfast after we get our legs stretched out here in Tucson, Arizona. The Sunset Limited has traditional dining, so we are excited to order our favorite breakfast. The Railroad French Toast with a side of bacon is my favorite. It is served with fresh fruit on top as well as whipped cream. It is always a tasty treat and it has yet to let me down. Now Rob's choice, uh, he chooses the scrambled eggs, sausage, potatoes, and a croissant. We sit and enjoy the views of the desert in Arizona as we eat our breakfast. Now we're going to show you guys around the train starting with our room. So we've got two seats here and they are facing each other. So you've got the window in the middle and the two seats are across from one another. You've got the table here in the middle. You can pull that out if you want to get some work done. It does have some flaps that fold out as well. Now on my seat, we'll start here. There is only one outlet. Uh, in the Superliner roomette. So we always carry this one with his absolute favorite. You can hook up four USB items as well as plug something right into the outlet on the outside. We always travel with this. It is a universal adapter as well. So it's nice to have those four spots as well as being able to plug something into the front here. Sometimes I plug my flat iron in here to use as I'm getting ready in the morning. So this is great to have. Now you also have temperature adjustment here. Uh, you can make it cooler or warmer. It's also set to normal. Normal is going to make it feel like the hallway temperature essentially. And then you can make it a little bit cooler, turning it to the left and a little bit warmer, turning it to the right. It's not going to change the temperature a ton, but it will make a little bit of a difference. You'll be able to feel that. There is also a light, a reading light on this side as well. Just make sure not to point it at your partner's face across from you. Now on the other side, we've got the attendant call button as well as the control for the ceiling light and also the night light as well. Then we've also got the uh, music control buttons here. Now these music control buttons don't actually control music. They do control the announcements overhead. So just make sure you check that when they are making the announcements because you can turn those announcements off in your room so that you don't hear those um, if you're trying to take a nap in the afternoon um, or whatnot. They don't make announcements at night. You do have a reading light on this side as well. Again, don't point it right at your partner's face. Now, these are the steps that Rob uses to get up to his upper bunk when he goes up there. We do use them as storage during the daytime. You've got a nice full length mirror here. And I keep my big backpack right here on this top step during the day. Now at night I set it over in the corner so it's out of the way because um, it is challenging to come down those steps if you've got something like this in the way. Rob could trip and fall down. We don't want that. Now on the other side, 
You've got a little trash bin here where you can um, throw your trash away. Then you have a small closet here. You've got hand towel and washcloths provided for you for your shower or just to freshen up. It is a very small closet, so there's not a lot of storage in there, but you can always just hook your jackets out here or there's another coat hook here in front of the closet as well. All right, time to talk upper bunk. And this is my bunk bed here. It is... Uh, a great place to be you kind of have a lot of privacy up here you don't have any windows though over here on the side and that's kind of a bummer because I do like to look out at night you only get those in the view liner you won't get any windows on a super liner which is the routes that are west of Chicago so I do also have this uh, little net here and in the net I keep some snacks my headphones some water any medication I might need in the night and that's good they do also give you a blanket up here and a pillow I've brought my trusty travel pillow with me as well uh, that's a good thing to have now one other thing I have up here is a light right here because it is kind of hard to reach the controls uh, downstairs you'd have to come down and do that so I don't usually want to do it at night I just leave use that night and to get up and down the best thing to do to go in head first and go back out feet first because you've got these steps right here that you can step on and they're pretty easy to go down backwards so and this is I wouldn't call this the biggest area to sleep in but it is nice and it is comfortable the bed is plenty long for most people and I, and I really like it Once you get in the bathroom, all you have to do is slide that little handle and the light will light up. That lets you know you're locked in. And this is a Superliner 1, I believe, and it has the nicer bathrooms than the Superliner 2. So if you're in a Superliner 2, see if there's a Superliner 1 you can walk through. The toilets are angled, so there's a lot more space. On the other ones, they're just kind of straight and you run out of space real quick on those. The other thing is these uh, faucets are much taller, a lot more room, and the water stays on when you hit it, which is really good. So this is probably, I'd say, one of the better Hamtrak bathrooms. You do have three of them, like I said, down here. One upstairs, there's not many people down here, so these are almost always empty. And then the shower is right across the hall. Let's go check that out. Same deal in here. You just kind of slide that lock, light comes on, and you do have a place for dirty towels, so uh, no one has showered today. You have all these towels that you can put there, and kind of a seat to sit on, and a pretty big shower, actually. You've got a two step process here, so what they're telling you to do is to set the temperature here with number one and then hit the button there push it for number two you do that the water's going to come out right there so i'm going to hop out before i actually do that because i don't want to take a shower right now and uh that's a shower name track a lot of people ask if you have to wait or if to pay or if there's a time limit showers are free there is no time limit and quite honestly, in all the Amtrak rides I've ever taken, I've never seen anyone take a shower. I have taken them though, but I've never seen anyone else getting in or getting out of it. So if you come down here and you want to take a shower, it'll almost assuredly be empty.
For lunch, we opted to eat in our room and we did decide to mix things up a little bit by picking one item from the children's menu, which is the hot dog and the hamburger. And then we just split both of them and sat in our room and ate as we watched the views of the desert. It is warm here, a little over 90 degrees, but there's a big treat here at the El Paso platform. That is the famous El Paso burrito lady. She is right outside the train with a cooler full of burritos. You can hop off, buy one of those from her, and it will be delicious. And again, for those passengers that wish to step off for a quick smoke, you can do so. However, we do actually please do not smoke in front of the doors. Also, for those passengers that wish to step off to stretch your legs, you can do that as well. We are running on time, so that means we can't leave the station until scheduled departure time, and that is 12.10. Once again, for those passengers that wish to wander away from the train, please be back by 12 o'clock. We will depart on time, and if you're not back by then, we will be leaving you behind. We have stopped here in Houston for a rather long break. Got about an hour and 20 minutes. But as you can see, it has been and is still <laughs> raining pretty heavily, so we're just kind of camped under this awning here in Houston. Not much we can go do, but we've been hanging out with our room attendant, Dee, and talking to him and having a good time.
All right, guys, we made it to New Orleans and we are in the Troubadour Hotel. It is a part of the Hilton Tapestry collection. And when you walk in, you see the bathroom right here, really spacious bathroom. We have a corner room, so we've got uh, city views, which I'll show you in just a second. Really a nice space here, great space here for a suitcase, closet to hang stuff, and a nice full length mirror. Not really sure what the deal is on the desire sign, but um yeah <laughs> the light is lit uh and then we've got some really nice decor here television and um there was a seal as you walked in the door and you can see here on the remote as well where they're doing um extra cleaning here in the hotel rooms each one that we've been in we have noticed that we've also got a nice little coffee bar here there is a mini bar paid mini bar if we want that and we can get uh use these glasses and all that kind of good stuff for the bar look at this nice little seating area and a great couch here at the end of the bed and then we have a nice king bed real pretty the way it's all done up nice nightstands and then we have a pretty view out here of the city and everything that's going on All right, we have had a great time here in New Orleans, but it's time to check out of our hotel and we're gonna be hopping on the Crescent today. Now the Crescent is gonna take us through Atlanta and all the way up to New York. Interestingly, we're from Atlanta, we're not stopping there though, and we've actually never gotten off the train in Atlanta, we always go to New York. So we're doing that again and we're gonna have a great time up there. Excited to see what New York and the Northeast has for us this time.
excited to be in a view liner tonight because look how much space I have tonight and a window on the top bunk. You don't get that on a super liner, so yeah, this is gonna be great. I'm gonna set my area up here and then get some snacks from Allie. flexible dining so we do have the uh, flexible dining menu that we ordered off of for breakfast and we got the continental breakfast which gives you a choice of lots of different things including a breakfast sandwich which is what we opted for um, and then I also got cereal with mine but you can also get yogurt and a uh, like a protein bar type thing and then they also have um, buttermilk pancakes with sausage and the three egg omelet and that comes with uh, I think bacon and potatoes or sausage and potatoes um, on the side so that's good we're going to order some lunch from there later on but right now I am going to open up this sandwich and see what this is all about I haven't had it a long time Ooh, that looks good oh my look at that cheesy I'm about to make a mess. It's hot. Let's see if I can bite into it. Hold on. Here we go. Let's give it a shot, guys. Mm. That bite is really good. You know, for something that's warmed up and not made fresh, it's actually really tasty. So I'm going to keep enjoying my breakfast. Rob's going to eat his. And then we'll see you guys later for some views out the window.
Okay, it is lunchtime. So we have chosen again, this is from the flexible dining menu that we chose and you could choose a slow braised beef, um, the Thai curry street noodles, chicken a la rosa, Atlantic salmon and shrimp and big ziti and meatballs. And if you watch our channel, I bet you, you can guess what we got before I even tell you, but I'm gonna tell you. Okay, so if you watch our channel, you probably already know that I picked the salmon because I love fish. So this is the salmon and it has some shrimp on the side and I don't, the person who's cooking these, the chef and uh, warming these up over in the cafe is doing an excellent job because look at how nice that is. It's not all dried out. It's still got some nice moisture to it. And then we get a little salad, which is awesome get a little bit of greens in there that would be great and I got a ginger ale with my lunch to drink and guys do not sleep on these if you have the option to get the butter cakes that's one of the top best things I think about the flexible menu <laughs> is the dessert I love sweets so this dessert is my favorite um, and then if you also again watch our channel you already know Mr. Rob has got himself his baked aziti and meatballs. And he got a salad as well, and he got water to drink with his. And he also got a butter cake. Now, these are like super rich. So what we usually do is we just split it, and we each eat half. And then we save the other one for later. So I think the other one we're going to save for tonight when we get to New York. I think we're going to have this in the hotel room after we get some dinner somewhere on the streets of New York. I don't know what we're going to get, but I know we're going to want that for dessert later. So one for now and one for later. And we're going to dig in here and prep our lunch and eat it.
Ponte. All right, we got off here in DC, stretching our legs, and we've got the Northeast Regional on one side and we're on the other. Make sure I get on the right train when I get back on. All right, so we're back on board. I think on the right train, there's another train. <laughs> next to us here too. So it was actually four trains sitting in the station loading and unloading people. But uh, I think it's time we give you guys a little room tour. So let's start right here. We've got a roomette and this is the rear facing seat right here, which is the one that Rob is in. And the two bottom seats actually make up the bed. So take a look here, you've got a night light a little bit brighter light and these are the buttons here that are going to turn that on and off now in this corner back here we've got a fan slash air conditioner we're in a tunnel here so it's a little bit dark there we go we're out of the tunnel so here is a fan and you can set that to low medium and high and it actually blows really good um, air there. There's also air coming out of this vent here and for some reason tonight, last night, I felt some heat coming out of this one right here. So um, I'm not really sure why there was heat and air at the same time, but nonetheless. So that's this side here and then there is a attendant button here and here you can set the temperature. It actually has numbers um, and we've got it set pretty cool to about Rob's got it set to 50 degrees, <laughs> but it's not really 50 degrees Fahrenheit in here. Um, our jackets are hanging here, and there is a, a strap here to pull them in, but we don't have long jackets. And I'm storing my backpack right here with, and there's a little trash can there. And this is where the toilet paper is stored. And we'll talk about that in just a second. So here is the tray that we can eat our meals at here in the room. You can also play checkers if you bring a checkerboard, checker pieces with you. I've never seen them on board, so I think you have to bring your own or you can make some probably too. And they do provide water for you in the roomettes, so we've got that. And a nice view as we leave Washington DC here. Let's take a look at the other side. So this is my seat here. I'm facing forward and here we've got the announcements so you can turn it up or down and then right here you've got your lights again the wall one and the small reading light also note that with this switch you can turn that air off right there the flow will turn completely off and the reason why there's toilet paper on the other side is because we have a toilet right here right here in the room and we've also got a sink Right here okay and notice that there's no drain here what happens is the water fills here and then when you tip this up see those little holes it washes back and down just make sure you always secure that because the person up above is going to end up standing on that and probably having quite the accident coming down we've also got outlets here you've got two of them and this is where you flush the toilet. And this light lets you know when the toilet is not usable. It lights up orange. And there's a mirror light, which lights up right here. And then, when the sink is down, see how this lights up here? That way, it alerts to the person on top that they can't come down. And then you've got some soap here, and they give you these nice little cups, which is perfect for in the morning, for brushing your teeth. And we've got some towels here, too. And there is a room light master switch here. You can turn it off and on right there. And that's basically what we've got down here. Give you another quick glance before 
I take you up to see Rob's humble abode, and that is the penthouse. And listen, in a view liner, the penthouse is really the penthouse, right, Rob? Yeah. <laughs> First thing I want to show you is where I put my stuff, and that is this huge compartment here. Uh, I've got my backpack in there, and then there was a that's not my M&M wrapper. Someone left that from the last time in the Disney book, apparently. I know, it's a magazine. Uh, that was up there. Anyway, I like to put my stuff up there because you just have access to everything. You can put your headphones, your iPad, whatever, just lay it out up there. Get whatever you want, lay your snacks out. You also have this little pouch right here. Good for your glasses, snacks, like that. Um, so that is amazing. One thing that's not amazing about up here though is this feature here, which is the speaker. <laughs> so if there's an announcement, it's basically right in your ear. So this morning I think they made a mistake announcement at about 6 or 6.30 and it woke me up. She never heard it uh, because you can't really hear them very well downstairs. Uh, another great thing we have is windows. You have windows on the viewliner. You don't have those on the Superliner. So if this is your first ever trip you're considering going on, this is a good one because this space is so much uh, taller than you have on a Superliner. If you have two people and you're not really sure which one of you is going to be up and which one's going to be down and you're both kind of nervous about being in tight spaces, definitely try the Viewliner first because the Superliner is like... It's literally like half the size of this. So you, when you're laying down, you can't sit up at all. It's You just have a few inches of, of clearance even when you're laying down. So it is pretty tight. I'm used to it now and I don't mind it, but I, I really do love it when we get in this one because the window uh, is a great feature. Not much else up here other than I do have access to this air control, which is really cool. And you can turn this to change the airflow. You've got your light switches here, which frankly are confusing sometimes. When you get on the train at night, first thing I would do is try out all the buttons because like last night, it's been a while since I've been on one of these Viewliner roomettes and it was about one o'clock in the morning and I was, this light was still on over here a little bit and I didn't know how to turn it off. And I, I looked at all the buttons and I was like, if I hit the wrong button, all the room lights are going to come on and Allie's going to wake up and it's going to be bad. So I just left it on. It wasn't that bright really. But my advice to you is figure out what all these little mirror light buttons do and how bright they are before you get going, before you go to bed. And also figure out where you're going to step because you got to hit that top pink step with your first foot, that one that she's touching. If you don't hit that step, that other one right there is the toilet lid, and it's too far down to hit. If you if you miss that, unfortunately in the night it's, it can get pretty dark in here. If you miss that, you will probably fall into the person on the bottom bunk and wake them up. So uh, I won't say if that's happened to me before, but I'm just saying take some precaution. Uh, other than that, this is a great area. It is my favorite uh, favorite sleeping accommodation. You will notice that on this end of the bed, it does kind of cut out and it is a little bit wider than on that end. So this end that I'm sitting on now is definitely the side that you want to sit on with your head or lay down on it with your head uh, to get the most comfortable ride. But this mattress is very, very comfortable. I love it. The little uh, strap thing really holds you in well. And uh, yeah, I couldn't be more excited to be up here and uh, I'm going to sit up here now for a little bit and just read and listen to some music while we're uh, moving along because the window makes it possible just to sit up here during the day too.
All right, we made it to Moynihan Train Hall here in New York City, and we are about to go directly across the street to our hotel. What do you think about that ride? That was one of the best rides we've ever had. <laughs> it was smooth, just it was a great ride all around. All right, we are outside B&H Photo, which is my favorite store in the city. It's the store right behind me, and it's huge. It's got everything you can want if you're a photographer, so if you like photography and you're in the city, make sure you check this out. All right, we found the line for Saturday Night Live. It's Friday, next like show's tomorrow, so we could camp out here all night, but we're not gonna do that. We're gonna go find a diner. Got a few that we normally eat at in New York City, so we're gonna go check one of those out right now. So guys, last night we went to go see Jerry Seinfeld live at the Beacon Theater. And we thought we'd stay with that theme, so we came to the place where Jerry Seinfeld and Larry David came up with Seinfeld, the TV show. And it's this Westway Diner behind me. We're gonna go inside, grab some food, and just enjoy hanging out where one of our favorite shows was created. Why are you holding your hand? <laughs> Hey guys, we have been enjoying our time here at the Moynihan Train Hall Metropolitan Lounge. Uh, the staff here is absolutely amazing. We met a couple of great guys who are also watchers here on the channel. Hey guys, um, so we're waiting for our train. We're enjoying our time here and we are headed to Boston before too long.
going from New York to Boston and I have to say this is the biggest bathroom that I've ever seen on an Amtrak train. I think it is a uh, wheelchair accessible one but still really really large. So I'll show you what that's like. changing table behind me as you can see uh, and the sink and so this is uh, there's an electrical outlet there too so this is a pretty good bathroom as far as Amtrak bathrooms go actually one of the best I've ever seen the water does run even when you're not holding down uh, the faucet which is always good because it's pretty hard to brush your teeth or something if it turns off every time that you let go of it so i um, got to give this bathroom uh, a big thumbs up. It's one of the best ones uh, out there. So this is the Asela, and uh, we're going to go check out the rest of the train now. Okay, one other note after having used this bathroom is that it's a good thing there's handrails. This is good because we are moving pretty fast. This train goes up to 150 miles an hour, and you may want to use the handrails in here. Uh, it's kind of hard even just to stand up in the middle of this because it's so big. And there's, I can't really touch any of the walls right now. So uh, near the toilet, there are handrails. You can hold on to those. And uh, yeah, we are moving really fast. All right, guys, we're in Boston Common now. This is such a cool place. So many beautiful buildings all around. And we are on the Freedom Trail. This is actually where it either starts or begins, depending on where you hop on for the Freedom Trail. It is the oldest public park in the United States. It's a beautiful property here.
also this tavern behind me, um, Bell in Hand, is actually the oldest tavern in the United States. It was quite popular when we were here on the weekend. They do have some outside dining too. It's a beautiful place to come and just hang out with your friends when you're here in Boston. So we are at the North Station waiting on the Down Easter and we had a little bit of an incident because we went to the wrong station. We went to the South Station, which is the station we came in on, but uh, we were able to quickly get a taxi and zip right over here. It's uh, less than two miles away from the South Station and a very friendly and helpful taxi driver brought us over. So we're here at the North Station waiting on the Down Easter headed to Maine.